Well, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, whenever it is you choose to watch with us. We're glad that you are uh, that you're joining with us and studying with us together. And Pastor Isaac, this is Ryan, and uh, we're glad to be with you today. And what we're going to be studying, if you're joining in for the first time, we are studying the Adult Sabbath School Bible Study Guide. It's a mouthful, and I always mangle it, so I cheated and just read it this time. Um, now this is the uh, let's see, it's the second quarter, right? Third quarter. Th third quarter. A little behind. It's the third quarter, and it is the crucible with Christ. So, uh, in this week's lesson, we're looking at Psalm 23. And uh, you may be familiar with Psalm 23. It's one of the most beloved psalms in all of the Bible. Um, perhaps you've heard it uh, hundreds of times already. And perhaps you've never actually studied it, though. So we hope you'll enjoy the study with us today as we dig into it a little bit uh, deeper than we normally do. And before we get started, Ryan, would you uh, have prayer for us? Yes, of course. Great. All right, thanks. Hold our heads. Dear Holy Father, thank you so much um, for bringing us together to study your word and mm. dig in um, what is sometimes the most rewarding in trying to dig a little deeper into uh, the often so familiar that they're overlooked passages. Mm. Um, please be with us and guide our discussion by your spirit. In thy name, amen. Amen. All right. Well, so we might as well, I guess, start with um, the memory text. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, they just chose, I guess, one text out of Psalm 23. And there's no reason why they, uh, any of them would have worked, right? Yes. Okay. yes. So there's not a, I think there's, I can't remember how many. Yeah, there's only like six. There's only like six verses. It's only so. six verses long. There's only six verses long. Uh, yeah, no, it feels okay. longer than it is. It does is. feel longer. It All feels right. longer than it, than it is. So. Okay. Well, our memory text is Psalm 23, 23, or Psalm 23, 3. three. And uh, I'll be reading that from... The New Living Translation, it reads, He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. And if you're familiar, more familiar with the New King James Version, it's similar. Uh, he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So paths of righteousness or right paths, either one. Um, all right. So... Have you ever had, you know, the way it begins here in uh, in Sundays, or uh, I'm sorry, Saturdays, Ryan, is uh, just a little story where it feels, um, Sophie is, is the is the lady there in the story. Mm -hmm. She feels like she has been, um, uh, goodness, um, now my, my mind just blanked. Uh, I guess betrayed. taken advantage of or <laughs> betrayed, that's the word. Betrayed. It, as I was hunting for uh, betrayed. And, and uh, betrayed by someone who she felt was, you know, very close at first. Has that ever happened to you, ever, in your life? Um, Even on a minor, you know, Yeah, minor when, I went to a, when I went to a new school in, okay. in second grade, I remember, I remember for the first time ever mm -hmm. having a scenario where pe I thought people were my friends, and then they, they, they would turn out. It, mm. They were very, I guess the word we would use is two-faced. So okay. we'll put it All that right. way. So. It is hurtful. It is. It is extremely hurtful. Um, and so Sophie, in the midst of this, she's feeling hurt. She grabs her Bible and she reads something from Psalm 23. Mm -hmm. um, and you're right. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. Six verses. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't read it near enough, apparently. Uh, she reads verses three and four. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read that one more time. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the dark valley of death, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect me and comfort me. Um, so, I guess, in life, when I, when I read that, and I read that story, and I think of my own stories, you know, times where I thought it was one way and it ended up being hurtful mm -hmm. and not the way that I thought, um... There have been times, I guess, where I have questioned, like, uh, what you know, why is this happening, or you know, what what good purpose is there in in this, whatever's taking place, you know, how could this be good? Um, and yet, verse four, um, that's that's a pretty clear statement from David, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and and it's not um, if I walk through 
the valley of the shadow of death or the dark valley of death, or maybe I might, it's when, when I do. It is a guaranteed, we are going to walk through it. We are going to be hurt. We are going to mm-hmm. suffer uh, fear, unknown, you know, uh, betrayal, whatever it is. Um, but there's that promise. Yep. So um, let's let's keep going though, because otherwise, I think I think we could spend a yeah. little, little too much time on that. But we got to we got to go through this whole thing. Yes, we do. All right. <laughs> so Sundays, the Sunday. shepherd. Yeah. So jumping into it, it talks about the Lord is my shepherd. It kind mm-hmm. of focuses on the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And so Sundays is all kind of this idea of. We've seen this before, hmm. this thing of Christ as a shepherd, right? Or sure. God as a shepherd, right? And we That's see this a lot. Um, yeah. In fact, there are several verses that it gives in the Bible. And as sort of the lesson challenges you, what do you learn about a shepherd from each text, right? And okay. so it kind, of, it kind of challenges that a little bit. So <clears throat> shepherds in our modern culture... Uh, that's not really much of a thing. No. It, it still is a thing, but not but it was a very average person. Big deal in their culture. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. But Even to the point of when Christ was born, right? There were shepherds in the field, yep. right? This was mm-hmm. a very, this was a. It's sim, uh The best way I think we could understand it now is agri is sort of agriculture. I think that's the closest thing that we have to it now because they did have agriculture, but in the Middle East, a lot of their agriculture is livestock like livestock is a much greater portion of it because not a lot not as much stuff grows there whereas here it's not as high of a portion of it right 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 now now this may sound really off the wall and this may be only in my own twisted mind i thought this but uh i've always compared the shepherds to um, thinking about a group of people that would exist today and i thought um trash collectors they are, um, we don't usually look at them as being a very, they're a vital part of our society. But it's not, uh, most people don't grow up thinking, I want to be a trash collector. That's what I want to do. But if we didn't have them, uh, we'd fall apart. You know, the trash mm-hmm. would pile up. It would, it would be incredibly terrible. Um, it would be, so, I would almost, I mean, there is a slight difference in that shepherds, they weren't walking the streets of cities, right? And that, no, no, there, no, that's the difference. They is were, yeah, they were looked down. It's almost like a. It's almost almost the modern day version of it would be a farm hand. Would be like a lower underpaid farm hand, like not a farmer, okay. but a farm hand. Because a lot of times you think of farmer, you think of the person kind of running the operation, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But these are farm hands. They're not usually the ones in charge. Usually, they're out there because whoever owns the flock doesn't really want to have to do it. it like. That, they're caring that, for that, someone that else's property. Nitty gritty yeah. down in the yeah, dirt. Yeah, they're caring for someone yeah. else's okay. property, basically. And I think that's the only reason I, I in my mind, associated mm-hmm. them with, with trash collectors yeah. is it's a job that no one really wants no, to do. No, no one you wants know, to do it. It's dirty, you're looked down on. So, um, But because they have listed those verses, and since we don't deal with shepherds every day, mm-hmm. why don't we go through those real quick? Sure. And uh, I, if you'll read 4011, I'll read Jeremiah yeah. 23, and we'll just kind of go back and forth. So... Gotta scroll back up. <laughs> All right. Uh, Isaiah forty eleven says, "He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those who are with young." So it's kind of the he cares. There, a shepherd cares, and it's a very intimate kind of caring, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. it's not just a gentle. Yeah, uh, it's not just a here. Let me feed some food, you know, right, like no, throw some food over mm-hmm. a fence. It's very personalized. This is up care. close and personal. Carry, yes, gently it's very caring. caring. Okay. Yes. Uh, what about Jeremiah 23 and 4? This is, um, but I will gather together the remnant of my flock from wherever I have driven them. I will bring them back into their own fold and they will be fruitful and increase in number. Then I will appoint responsible shepherds to care for them, and they will never be afraid again. Not a single one of them will be lost or missing, says the Lord. So this is a little bit more of a of a twenty thousand foot view, but still, there's some very important language in there. They'll never be afraid. They will never uh, be lost or missing, and he's going to have responsible shepherds to care for them. So it's still a very yeah. caring mm-hmm. aspect of it. All right. And it's the idea of responsibility, right? Like the responsibility mm-hmm. is on the shepherd. You don't need to be afraid. That the sheep don't need to fear because they have responsible shepherds kind of meeting their every need. Right, right. right. Which ties back into mm-hmm. the first 
verse, mm-hmm. and the Lord is my shepherd, I don't have any needs. What about Ezekiel 34? Um, so in verse 12 it says, As a shepherd seeks out his flock on the day he is among his scattered sheep, so will I seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and dark day. Mm. This makes me think of the, the story of the 90, of the like, a hundred sheep, the right? Parable, the one yeah. that's lost, mm-hmm. right? And so yep. it's this thing the of cloudy, dark day. Yeah. All the sheep, right? And again, there's this personal touch, and this in this mm-hmm. version of the personal touch, it's that there's an act of seeking out, right? It's a, it isn't just enough of a, oh well, one got lost. Oh well, this is like this is like a child with their lost pet, right? Yes. Like I mean, they will yeah. canvas, they will do anything they can mm-hmm. until they find this sheep. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think we're a little more familiar with John 10. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is Jesus. He's speaking. He says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. Just as my father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep too. And I love this verse. I have other sheep too that are not in this sheepfold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice and there will be one flock with one shepherd. Um... I just, I love it so much because that it breaks the mold for anyone thinking that they are the group. Uh-huh. You know, anyone thinking, oh, well, we are the group. Mm-hmm. We are God's chosen. Whatever terminology you want to use for it, this breaks that. Mm-hmm. And so I like that quite a bit. All right, what is what about First Peter? First Peter uh, 2, verse 25 says, mm-hmm. For you were like sheep going astray, but have mm-hmm. now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Wow. Okay, that puts a little more emphasis on who the shepherd is right mm-hmm, there. Right. Not just a shepherd. Well, yeah, sheep. we're going through uh-huh. things, all right? Yeah. And I think at this point, deeper Peter probably knew hmm. something of, although at the time that Peter wrote this, John wouldn't have written that, but he probably would have known maybe this anecdote of Jesus's anyway. Or at least so, the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when I read, um, you know, that first, the first verse is, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In... in uh, New Living, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah, same thing, okay. But still, I like the way it words it. Mm-hmm. Um, and First Peter m- makes it clear that this shepherd, God, of course, it, um, is taking care of our eternal uh, well-being. Mm-hmm. Overseer of my soul. That's, that's some serious care right there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Um, when it says, what do you learn about the shepherd from each text? The one thing that jumps out like super clear from all of these passages is the shepherd cares about his sheep, uh, more than even we understand cares about his sheep. It's again, it's very personal, right? Mm -hmm. Like I think that's the thing is it's very, very personal and that's, that's a key thing. That's a very key piece of it. All right. So, um, now it asks, uh, what do you learn about the shepherd from this? Then, Psalm 23, what does a shepherd do to care for his sheep? So, and I think we'll... That's an easy one. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll, we'll get through this as we as go, because it wants you to kind of go through all of the, yeah. all the verses of it. So we can continue on, I think. we'll on, just I move think. on to yeah. Monday, we'll and we'll, on to we'll Monday, cover so. these. Right. Okay. So first, I will read. go ahead and read verse 2, because they kind of skip over verse 2. Oh, okay. So verse 2 was... Oh, you're right, they do. Yeah, they skipped over verse 2, so we'll do verse 2. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. How does New Living say? So, uh, pretty much the same thing. He lets me rest in green meadows, and he leads me beside peaceful streams. Now, I don't appreciate the peaceful streams as much as I do the still waters. And there's a reason. One of my theology professors... Uh, he was a, sh- a shepherd in Australia, oh. and so he was fond of telling stories. Uh, one of his favorite comments was, sheep are incredibly stupid animals. Uh, and he said it's telling that uh, humans are compared to sheep in the Bible. And he, he used to point that out all, all the time. But he did say something about this, about sheep. Uh, when you would get them to water, a water source, it could not be a moving stream. They would not drink. Even if it was a, a slow-moving stream, they wouldn't drink from moving water. So he would have to dam it up and make a pool. And so the still waters speaks to that. There's some extra effort going in. It's not just that uh, he leads me into green meadows, he leads me beside water. There's effort that goes into making that water mm-hmm. still, which again, like, as you pointed out, his care, his personal yes. care. So, so when, another way to say this is sort of, 
he you lie down and things that basically everywhere you go he's created with a personal touch for you to be yeah. as pleasing to you as and that's the personal touch right mm -hmm. he's trying to create a very pleasing environment right mm -hmm. which is why it feels contradictory later on but yes once we get to the, <laughs> once we get to four and five yes but <clears throat> before that three mm -hmm. okay what do you what do you have there on in oh it's, uh, it just says he leads me in right paths for his name's sake okay yeah, yeah. Um, and I think we I think we read it for yeah. this uh, he renews my strength and he guides me along right paths bringing mm -hmm. honor to his name okay yep that was a memory verse yeah. that's right that mm -hmm. was the memory text mm -hmm. for this week so. all right so paths of righteousness uh, paths of righteousness is what we call it or right yep. paths uh, how many times in your life as you have looked at your future sometimes let's just call it immediate future and you've been able to look down that we'll call it a path the path of your immediate future and determine what's ahead with uh, an absolute sense of clarity. Never. Okay. <laughs> Very, I mean, never really. So sometimes you can, like, uh, well, since we're talking path. Like maybe and, and a like, week. Like, like <laughs> there's, there's some fogginess, you know, and you might, you might say, okay, there's a few big items I think I can see, but everything else, you're right, yeah. With it's like a clarity, foggy mm -hmm. skyline. That's a good way to put it. It's like a okay. foggy city skyline. You might mm -hmm. see some lights. You might see some, like, some recognizable pieces. Really but large about, structures, yeah, but that's but about th it. That's about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if we, can't, if we can't see the path ahead, and yet he still says, uh, he guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. We can't necessarily see the path. So this involves uh, a pretty serious amount of trust. Mm -hmm. um, even you know, if we're just making out vague shapes in the in the future, you know, for our lives, uh, this involves a deep a deep sense of trust um, that he will lead us along right mm -hmm. paths. All right, um, even if things don't seem to be going that way. Uh, certainly, David in his life had some of those times, I would imagine. <clears throat> and I like that they go into this. Um... The lesson goes a bit into what makes the paths right. Okay. Right? And so one of the things it says is um, they lead to the right destination. Mm, yes, I highlighted that. That's which good. in this case is the shepherd's home. Mm -hmm. um, they are the right paths because they keep us in harmony with the right person, which is the shepherd himself. The shepherd is there along the way. Mm -hmm. Third, they're the right paths because they train us to be the right people, like the shepherd. So again, train you to be the sheep right and by right people in this case i think it's the idea of well as it's as the person said sheep are dumb right and so there's they could go very astray very quickly right they can. and so yes. it's like here i'm going to get you yep. to be the best possible version of a sheep okay. you can be okay. all right <laughs> and then fourth they are the right path because they give us the right witness as we become the right people we give glory to the Lord. And I like that as well, the mm -hmm. idea of sharing, right? Hmm. That's, yeah, absolutely. Giving glory to the mm -hmm. Lord is is the, the best way that we can Well, share. and so the idea of the right witness is because we're built to share, we will inevitably turn around. And how many times have you heard, be honest, you've heard mm -hmm. that sermon or that witness of someone and they're like, and by learning this, and you're like, no, no, like, no, that's... You 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 almost there there are moments where you almost want to speak out, but you don't want to like disqualify someone's witness. But it almost like for instance, I'll give you an example. Okay, yeah. Prosperity yeah. theology, you're like you've heard okay. the prosperity theology witnesses, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. it's very like, and by this I know that by doing, if I just keep doing these things, God will reward me and give me what anything I want. And yes. people will say things like that. And I'm just like, okay, so immediately uh, yes, I'm thinking, mm, no, and so that's not that, that doesn't feel like a right witness, okay. right? And uh, I think okay. that's kind of what's saying here is. He's, it's the right path so that you have the right experience so that your witness is a truthful witness as well. Actually a yes. right witness. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's and by being a good witness, we give glory to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to I read the second part of that. I highlighted that part because I liked it. The second part is important to realize that when God leads us, it's not simply a question of his delivering a parcel to the destination. It's mm -hmm. not just uh, from A to B. It's much more than guidance and protection like the four things listed there. Um, like many of the examples all through the Bible in which God is leading his people, either Israel or uh, Abraham by his promises, when God's guiding, it's all about his training his people in righteousness. Yep. Like what you talked about, making, um, shaping us into a right witness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. 
And with the right witness, we can um, accurately portray the character of God mm -hmm. to humanity. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, I think there's an eternal thing here, right? Like sure. there's this idea of eternity sure. of it's a right witness of in the end, there's no sin that creeps in and the mark of sin would be the wrong witness, right? Like would be a wrong, some sort of wrong path in this, right? And so that's why it's so important. It's interesting is that the, mm. it's synonymous. The correct witness of who God is, is synonymous mm. with no more sin. It's this thing of the whole God is unfair. God is unjust. All of those versions okay. of things of okay. the whole list. That's synonymous with a sin. With sin, there's mm -hmm. some. There's you see what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. it's a very interesting thing I think for eternal consequences of this too. Okay. All right. All right. I was grasping on. I, I, I think I understand what yeah. you're saying. Um, <clears throat> let's uh, let's go on to move to. Well, unless you want to discuss Monday's question at the very end. So the question is. How conscious are you that righteousness is the shepherd's priority for your life? That's the first part. I would think that's pretty cut and dried. Mm -hmm. uh, very conscious, you know. I mean, that's his goal. You know, the the end of sin to completely get rid of it. Um, the second part: How can trials change your life so that you better reflect the character of Christ? Uh, that's a little more challenging. I uh, I could go along in depth on this question, yeah. but I, I have seen it in my life and that I grew up, the short story is I grew up in an Adventist community all the way until, and actually I'm moving back to that same Adventist mm, community. And this, okay. is the, right. this is one of the reasons, one of the big apprehensions I had about moving back was God brought me into experiences after moving away, both here and during grad school as well of, I came to realize that mm. I had had very much an attitude of, I know what Christianity is about. I know who God is. I know mm. how all of this is. Like, I know all of this. I have and then answers. I had so many things that challenged that and challenged okay. it and challenged it. And it's, fr and it's interesting because now I run into it and I've noticed it's much more, the, these particular things I'm thinking of, it's much more of a born and raised and always in Adventist community. Mm things. I've seen it again and again, okay. and it yes. materializes. Absolutely Perhaps you've seen you. some of these things I have. too. I have. And it's amazing how it seems so cut and dry to them, right? Yes. And I was once that way. And God has read, led me through trials. And so it's one of those things of the trial can often feel like it's contradicting the very thing that you know is supposed to be true. And Sometimes that can, can be very scary and so that's why when i read this like how conscious are you that righteousness is the shepherd's party for your life like of course i know i know all of this stuff i know mm -hmm. it all i know it all well well how can trials change your life and the answer is they can change a lot of times they can challenge that very notion of what you maybe thought righteous what righteousness even was i guess is sort of okay. the point i'm pointing that's okay. where i'm coming, yes. I'm coming around to that yeah. so so while while i'm very conscious that righteousness is the shepherd's priority for my life I may have the wrong understanding of what righteousness mm -hmm. is. Okay, because because of my raised in the you know died in the wool, yes. whatever you know raised in the Adventist. Yes. Well, this is what righteousness is, mm -hmm. and I may have a, a, a very big mm -hmm. misunderstanding of that. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so the trials actually change our understanding of righteousness yes. into a more accurate mm -hmm. description. Okay. Yep, that's good stuff, man. Yep. Okay, Tuesday, um, <laughs> <laughs> the valley. This is where it starts to get not so. Uh, not so um, happy and yeah, it says joy. And, unexpected uh -huh. detour, though. <laughs> yes. It shouldn't, based on what we just talked about, it shouldn't be unexpected, right? right? right. Like, that's literally the point is that it's not, none, of, none of this should be unexpected, right? But I think this fits in well again with what I was just saying. I that think so. Suddenly, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in fact, that second paragraph uh, fits in very well with what you were just saying. It said, It would be nice if the paths of righteousness wound their way only along the grass bank you know, grass covered banks of cool streams. But this is not the way David paints it. Also nope. along these paths is the valley of the shadow of death. Yep. Uh, not a place that I, I think anyone is eager to visit, uh, regardless. No. Um, and of course they talk about flash floods, the wadis and the ravines and, and so forth. And the, the valley of the shadow of death, they say is a, is a, a euphemism for just very deep shadow or, or deep darkness. Um, 
And anyone, any, any of you out there who may be studying with us who have battled depression, sometimes uh, that can feel like the, the valley of the shadow of death. That's a, a deep darkness that you can't see light on the other side of. Um, yeah. So, uh, and, and the way they were, uh, yea, though I walk through, it's almost the same as the, living, the new living, uh, even when I walk. Yeah. It's a pretty much guaranteed we will go, mm -hmm. through, go through there. Well, though right. is, implies yeah. I have, right? I right. am, I will. Yeah. Like Even it, though it, I it am happens, walking. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and where I was going with that is, is uh, oh, yeah, just I guess based on what you were saying mm -hmm. before is this helps us to understand uh, not just righteousness as it manifests in us, but righteousness as it manifests in God because we take solace knowing that uh, while he doesn't prevent these things from happening to us he still walks in the valley with us mm -hmm. in the shadow knows the emotions mm -hmm. knows the hurt the anger the fear whatever it is is intimately connected with that and I wonder so hmm. having been raised I, I I like this 23rd Psalm because I'm realizing it's a great jumping off point to other Bible stories and to other things. And I, I, I realize now I've had other Bible stories in my head. Hmm. Here I have a bit of the Good Samaritan, like of just that, that's sort of what I've always pictured is the guy walking through the not so safe, oh, like street, okay, you know, okay, the, sure, sure. The, yeah, the, the, guy, the yeah, when, when, he yeah. when mm -hmm. they, the, where was he walking when they jumped him, right? This is what I think of as I, I somehow conflated those two in my head. But, but I'm also sure, thinking yeah. of, I wonder, just cause I know it's, this is one of those passages that a lot of Christians, a lot of times will like vocally speak out loud whenever they go through trials and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if this was going through the he this was going through the Hebrews when they were faced with a fiery furnace. Hmm. Because this would have been written at that point. They would have like possibly they would have known. It would have been written at that point yeah, either way. Probably. Yes. And so it's very possible they knew this. But again, it's interesting because again it says even when I do, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so but it's also interesting because it talks about he's there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say he'll deliver you though. It just says he's there. He's comforting you. He's there to comfort you. He's there to like he will be there with you. And he is there with them in he the is. end, right? He and he is. he is very he is. much there with them. He even shows um, that he's there with them physically. Now now before we get too far down that road. The second part of that is your rod and your staff protect me mm -hmm. and comfort me. Uh, would would you would you read that? I don't know if it says that verse in uh, the New King James right there in the. It just says uh, your rod and your staff they comfort me. And that's what it says. That's it. It doesn't, okay. it doesn't right. say protect. It just says comfort. Uh -huh. so. ah, okay. See, I think there's a big difference there, and and we could just drop off that protection because it doesn't. I guess the protection is that he offers is the uh, eternal protection. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul makes it, I think Paul makes it very clear that nothing can separate us mm -hmm. from the love of God, right? Yep. So the eternal protection, but but uh, the temporal protection, well, it doesn't always happen, does no, it? No, it does not. Uh, sometimes. Well, and that's the, literally what they say in the fiery furnace. They're like, well, even if he doesn't, right? It's like, still not, but they still, still know he's with them. Right. He right. doesn't, they're not saying so that. That's what leads their faith. Yes. They know that he's with them. So even if he doesn't deliver us, doesn't matter, King. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Because he's right. here the whole time. Yep. 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 So that is what gives us um, comfort. Mm -hmm. He's there. Oh yeah. And that's okay. Yep. So no matter what, it's that personal, mm -hmm. that personal mm -hmm. friend who's always there, right? Mm -hmm. The the cliche Jesus is the friend that's always there for with you, right? Or well, there for and you. It's, and it's, it's true. It's true. Yes. You know? Many cliches arise and people don't use them because they say, oh, it's too cliche. But cliches arise out, out of truth. Mm -hmm. um, so it does ask a few uh, questions, but maybe we'll just deal with the one at the very end. It says, have you ever felt that you have been falsely led into the valley? How did you respond to God during this time? Why do you think the shepherd might be willing to risk being misunderstood by preventing us to enter a dark valley? Uh, I'm going to start with that last question. You go well. I okay. I, I I was also there. I was okay, also right. on okay. that as well. So I'm interested um, to hear your because I have my own. Okay, thought. I'll, I'll I'll make mine short, okay. short and quick. Um, it is. I feel like uh, be, because God knows 
everything, future, everything. He knows my response to whatever it is, where, where, where he's leading me, wherever, whatever dark shadow, whatever valley of shadow of death I happen to find myself in, he knows what my response is going to be from that. And this is very difficult for many folks when I talk to about God's foreknowledge, but God's foreknowledge does not dictate my choices. Mm -mm. I still have freedom of choice. Yes. He just knows. That's yes. all. But that doesn't that doesn't get in my way. The way I always I think of it is God knows every choice we could have made, and He also knows the one we'll end up making. Yes. But that but the fact I see it as a He also knew all the other ones we could have made. Absolutely. That, and so and I don't see the problem with that. Of, if you were to say that, like I was like, so if you believe that at all, like there's no version where like either. Either free will exists or there's no version where free will could exist, right? right. Like, I'm like, which one is it? And, right. you know, and, and so it's... It's, it's got to be free yes. will. and so... So, it, and that being the case, then, um, I think that's exactly why, in my, in my thinking, that's exactly why he's willing to be misunderstood, because he knows the end result. Mm -hmm. So even if I suffer some misunderstanding at the beginning, at the end, I will understand, and I'll be okay with it. Mm -hmm. So... For him, I mean, maybe that sounds a bit callous, like looking down on these little humans and how they're they're hurting or they're in pain or, or danger or whatever it is, but they'll understand eventually. Uh, I guess you could say that's a callous attitude, but I just I don't see it that way. Mm -hmm. I see it as ultimately being, um, I guess, being the most so, caring, most caring it could be. So the first one, hmm. the the first thing I thought when okay. I read this, I kind of thought answered this all together as okay. like whole thing because I saw it as sort of a set of leading questions to kind of get you down to the last one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it says again, like, have you ever felt like you've been falsely led right into the valley? How did you respond to God during this time, and why do you think the shepherd might be willing? And I think all of this comes back to the idea of. I don't want to say genuine faith, but genuine faith. It's the mm -hmm. idea of. If there's no test, there's no faith. Mm. Because if everything just goes and you just go and it goes and it's like, hey, and it all worked out. And some people are like, see, that's faith. I'm like, that's <laughs> not faith. That's the opposite of faith. That's the everything magically worked out and I never had to do anything. I never had to stick it out, right? That's what Satan accused Job of. Mm -hmm. He says, Job only serves you because mm -hmm. he gets it all works everything. Out. Exactly. It all works out. Yep. Okay. All right. So and true so, faith. so it's the idea of gen of sort of genuine faith. It's kind of the idea of they always say like you know it's the it perfects your faith, right? A mm -hmm. lot of times they'll say like the fire you need to go through trials because mm -hmm. the fire purifies the faith, so to speak, right? The other thing I was thinking mm -hmm. though, as you were sort of talking about things, is I think so. It's the question of if God already knows why let it, why not just be like, oh well, this is what you would have done, and so I'll just tell you and da 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 da, da you know. I think it's the thing of. So you have kids, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you tell them, so there's some, there, there are some, some kids and some people that you tell them something and they can buy it. Right. Some, and that's enough. Yes. And they're like, okay, mm -hmm. you probably know you're smart. You know, mm -hmm. then there's the other type that's just like, mm, I don't know what you're talking about. Or I, I think it might be different for me or I, you know, I think like, the first type is much more rare. <laughs> the second time is much more well, common. Well, it depends on the thing, too. Yeah, it also perhaps, depends on the thing. Perhaps. And it depends sort of how rebellious they are that day, how adventurous they are. Just it, There's a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But I think it's this thing of God knows us, but we don't know ourselves, right? Which I preached a little bit about mm. this this last Sabbath. But it's this idea of, I think a lot of times, we're led into the valley because God's like, I know how you're going to react, but I don't think you know how you're going to react. And mm -hmm. I want you to know how you're going to react. And I think with COVID was an example of that, for instance. Mm -hmm. I think with COVID, we learned a lot more about ourselves, of mm -hmm. how would we, we, we would react to things like... It was a pretty big test. And it's in and, and all sorts of things, not just mm -hmm. thinking of like last day, like end times restrictions, which I know no. a lot of people thought of. They're no, like, and no, see, no, people no. will just bow down and stuff. I'm like, uh, you know, people will just like keel over. I'm like, I think a lot of it also says of like protecting your fellow man and things of that sort too. And it's just, it's very interesting mm -hmm. of, again, I think we all learned a lot about ourselves. I learned a lot about, about myself nature. too. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, yeah. I don't have anyone particularly in mind. I'm just thinking of myself. I learned a lot about myself. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot more about myself of being much more sort of, 
I'll say flippant with rules, we'll put it that way, <laughs> being flippant with rules, and I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be okay. And I mean, again, that's something I have to live with now, because now I know, right? Another, mm. uh, on a lighter note, mm. before before COVID, there was yeah. always this saying you would hear people say, they say, well, if I just had the time, if I found the time, I would do all these things. I would do all these projects. Mm. I would do this. I have not heard a single person say that since COVID, because we all now know would we actually do we it because we had the time <laughs> some did some did not yep. and so yeah. Yeah. Like, that's a better a, a um, nicer lighter example of we know uh, we now learn something about ourselves right that so we didn't know i liked what you said it, it sparked my imagination when you said if you know because god knows mm -hmm. he could just tell us mm -hmm. but telling us wouldn't be us learning no that would be us being informed mm -hmm. it wouldn't be us learning so it's like uh I don't know. Maybe this is a poor example. It was the first thing that came to mind. It's like playing an instrument. You can you can tell someone all about how to play the instrument, where to put their fingers. Let's say guitar. Where to put their fingers? What chords mm -hmm. to strum? You can teach that, but until they practice, they won't actually learn. And that's actually. But they'll be informed. The hardest thing to get around is trying to explain that this is actually how it works with everything, even mm -hmm. things such as because. It's me, mathematics. Mm. Mathematics is the same way of, it's amazing how many people I have to explain. I'm like, if I tell you how to play basketball, are you now a pro at playing basketball? You just put it in the hoop, right? You shoot you're, from the three-point line, you get three points if you make it in, so just make it in. What's the problem? You're now informed. <laughs> you're yes. informed. You know how uh -huh. to do it, right? right. You should right. know now. But it's amazing how many students, like, they think that, right? That they're with just math. like, with math or mm. anything where they feel like they don't actually have to People seem to have this idea about the brain that even though the brain is the very thing that controls all of our body things, mm -hmm. information's different. If you just tell <laughs> me the information, I'll know it then. I'll know it perfectly, won't have to practice it or anything. Yeah. I'll, I'll, do, I'll know it. Totally right? works that way. It's like, right? yeah, so yeah. just <laughs> I'll just tell you all the hand movements yeah. to do and you can just do them, and you right? Do and you know it. Uh -huh. What's the problem here? Like, yeah. hello, Michael Jordan figured it out a while back. Like, why didn't he just always make all this shots? Like, Maybe he was failing on purpose, right? And like, <laughs> and so you made a good point. You said everything. Mm -hmm. everything. Everything has to be practiced. Yeah. Everything has to be practiced. But we pick and choose. The only way you learn anything, as I, as I tell mm. students, I say, we don't really learn anything. We get used to things. We don't because learn, we, we get used to it. We just do it long enough that we get used to it. Okay. So All right. in a sense, we get used to it to the I point that, that it's not weird anymore. At first it was really weird for me because I taught and myself it, and guitar. It, and it stretches the... Yeah, at first it felt really weird playing guitar okay. because it just didn't feel right. But I got used to it. Hmm. <laughs> that is, that's an excellent way to look at it. <laughs> I, I can't argue with at it. At <laughs> first, some of these math ideas hurt my brain. It was hard mm -hmm. to wrap my mind around, and now I and then I got you're, used to them. You're, you're used I to got it. used to it. I just got used to the abstraction right. again. It's That's just, a good way to turn. You just get you do it long. Learning. You do anything long enough, you get used to it. I like it's, a bit, that. it's habit, basically. It's, I like you're that. just forming a habit. And I've said it many times, but yeah, yeah, that is absolutely right. Yeah. I've never equated that with uh, you don't actually learn something. You don't learn anything. We're right. just. Yeah. Which explains why we form habits. If you've ever been upset at God, like, man, why'd you make it so we form habits? That's literally how we learn things. Mm -hmm. We learn because we form habits. We'll that's that's the way we create that. That's the way we just are built to do things. Hmm. Hmm. Makes me wonder when what that will look like when uh, time is no longer a consideration. You know, when time is no longer a factor. Time mm -hmm. doesn't mean what it does now. Uh, I guess we'll still... Our habit will slowly become being the most perfect full version of ourselves that we yeah. can be, and we'll become more and more habitual in that, <laughs> so to speak, right? Yeah. Okay, so what about verse, this is verse uh, five. Five, now. yeah. So this um, is moving on to Wednesday, right? You prepare yes, a table before yeah. me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. And There's, that's a lot happening, right? There now. is a lot happening there, and I like that they explain the concept of David's culture when David was writing this. I, mm -hmm. I think it's a good point to mm -hmm. start there. Of It says um, about halfway down, In David's culture, when an honored guest came for a feast, the host would anoint his head with oil as the guest was about to enter the banqueting hall. The oil was a mixture of olive oil and perfume. Then the guest would be seated in front of far more food than he could ever eat. Okay? Mm -hmm. then, so. so far more food 
than one could ever eat. Because this one has always stumped me a little bit. And now that we're talking about it, I'm, I'm thinking new things. But you prepare a table, let's say a feast, mm -hmm. a feast before me in the presence of my enemies. What's that business? You know, and the, so more than a, a feast is mm -hmm. more than you could eat. Mm -hmm. So what do you do with the leftovers? Maybe you share it with your enemies. Maybe right? you share it with your Which, enemies. Which again, there's an huh. interesting thing here because when you read this, I guarantee you, hmm. if you're all, if most people, if they're also reading this, they're like, well, my enemies will take it though. My enemies will take it. I got to be on my guard. I can't relax because my enemies are going to take all my food from me. Yeah. You know, I, I, I know that's what I think of as I'm like, oh, well, I can't trust them. I got to be careful, right? So, so maybe, and, and that happens when we have the idea like, um, I have, I have collected all of this. This is mine now. And I don't want anyone taking it from me, right? That idea. Mm -hmm. But, but this is very different when it says, uh, you prepare a feast for mm -hmm. me. So this is not something that I have done. Mm -mm. I've not made this happen. So maybe it's easier in that sense when we recognize that God has done this for us, that we lose that that selfish, this is mine and my enemies will take it from me. You know, that mentality where it now becomes, oh, I can share this because God's going to renew it mm -hmm. for me. And that's the reason. <clears throat> I'm interested to hear what the New uh, Living Translation says, because it says, you anoint my head with a will, my cup runs over. I'm just interested to know what they what so it says. So in this, essentially the same thing. It just spells it out a little bit more clearly. It says, you, you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You welcome me as a guest, anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. So I like that, yeah. Overflows yeah. with blessings. It yeah. just makes it a little more uh, blatant, I guess, right there. Now, something that my pr professor, the one who was the, um, who was the, 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 the shepherd, shepherd. Uh, he said something about this. I wasn't aware of this, that sheep develop uh, mites and that will get in their eyes, that will get in their ears, yeah. on, on their head. And one of the best ways they have of dealing with that when you're out in the wild and woolly areas is uh, oil. You anoint the sheep's the, the head the head of um, the sheep's head with oil, and the oil smothers the mites. Hmm. Um, and it doesn't harm the you know the sheep at all, but it takes care of business. And so it's 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 medicinal. And then there was also like you said uh, in the culture there, uh, it was actually a, a, an honor, a, a mm -hmm. thing of honor too. So um, I think both things, uh, both things count for this. Um, not only are we honored, but uh, also it is medicinal. It helps and I think this us. speaks a lot to, I think a lot of times we're afraid to kind of go out into the world, right? We're kind of... Like a, a fortress model. Yeah, almost. we'd rather, okay. yeah, we'd rather build a wall than mm -hmm. go to the other, than be left out on the other side of one, right? Like that yeah. kind of seems to be our mentality. I think so. But what's interesting here is... It kind of, the way I'm kind of seeing it now is it's like, don't be afraid. I'm still with you. Hmm. Even if you, and it's, notice the key phrase says, my enemies. It doesn't say enemies. It says my enemies. So this is being seen from a very David point of view, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. it's very much from a human point of view of what do you, you are being, you are out there among people who you view as hostile. Hmm. Whether they are or aren't, you view them as hostile. Hmm. But there's plenty to go around. Like God's still there with you. Your every need is met more than enough. Don't be, you know, it's not like God's going to leave you out there. Like you're fine. And and actually, and he's not going to take you from there either, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, oh yeah, here's the table. It's like, but 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 all these other people around. It's like, yeah, eat up. Yep. <laughs> eat up. <laughs> <laughs> eat up. <laughs> There's a, a story, and maybe this is a little bit of a rabbit trail, but it reminds me of this because mm -hmm. we're talking about the feast and, and the uh, enemies. Um, and I'm going to butcher it just a little bit, but a gentleman was shown a vision of, of heaven and hell. And so he's shown, he's shown uh, hell first, and um, the door is opened. He looks in on this long, long table. You can't even see the end of it. And everyone is sitting at this table, and there's, it's just piled high with food beautiful amazing food and granted it's just a story so mm -hmm. um and uh, and everyone's starving to death i mean they're they're uh, they're literally just just starving uh, they all have long long utensils spoons and forks very long utensils and they're so long in fact that they can't get the food to their mouth 
So they're starving to death. Um, and the man said, this is horrible. This is horrible. I can't look at this anymore. And they said, oh, well, let me show you what heaven looks like. Walks next to the door, opens the door, and there's heaven. It's the same long table. You know, people all around it piled with food. And everyone has the same long utensils. And they're na- they're they're feeding each other because nice. they, can, they can feed Very each other. Nice. Yeah. They can't feed themselves. So this idea that uh, when you you brought it out very well when you said you prepare it, God prepares the feast in the presence of my enemies, and then the end part, my cup overflows with blessings, seems to um, just double down on that idea that you can't hold everything that God wants to give you, so share it mm-hmm. with your enemies. Even yep. share it. Um, so this yeah with the overflowing yep. as well. Very much. Hmm. All right. Um, what's the question on uh, on this one? Let's see. It says, reflect on how the shepherd has treated you when you have been surrounded by enemies. What can you see in these times that can enable you to give thanks even during such difficulties? You know, I don't often, I don't often see people as enemies for whatever reason, but sometimes situations. Situations can mm-hmm. seem very... Um, controversial or or even like out to get me type situation and I remember clearly one time many many years ago it was 1998 and uh, we we'd just uh, a flood had happened in the place where I'd lived and we'd lost everything and I remember standing there and going to the site where my where my house had been and you know stuff strewn everywhere the cars are full of mud everything is just destroyed and thinking wow <laughs> this is this is crazy you know there's nothing nothing left but uh, but it'll be all right. And I don't know exactly where that came from. I mean, I, I do. You know, I can say, well, it came from God, came from the Holy Spirit, putting it in my heart. But still, even to this day, I think, you know, well, why did I, you know, what, what makes you think everything's going to be all right, even when you're standing in the midst of so much destruction? Um, and it has something to do with uh, knowing that no matter what, God's still there. He hasn't gone anywhere. Mm-hmm. He's still there. Yep. Um, even if I can't see him, he's still there. So yep. for me at that time, that was very important. That, and I don't know about giving thanks, I guess, but being okay with the situation. So maybe I could be termed giving thanks. I'm not sure. What, what about you when it comes to that? Like, you know, surround. I mean, when it says surrounded by enemies, what 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 does that mean for you? Surrounded by enemies. Yeah, I'm I'm similar with you. I don't okay. I don't necessarily know. I think it's just recently. I would say it's. I don't know. I'm trying to. I'm struggling to put it into words. Hmm. Like I have an idea, but I'm struggling to put it okay. into words. Um, right. I guess I don't want to say like minded, but. They, they often say that if you have the, if your opinion is unpopular with both sides, right, mm-hmm. with like two sort of, with the two viewpoints and the two common viewpoints and your opinion seems to be sort of out of sync, then maybe you're onto something, but that can be really hard, right? And that's, <laughs> that's kind of what, that, I guess that's what it feels like yeah. a lot of times. It's just, okay. I feel, right. uh, I guess, not necessarily surrounded, but isolated, right? I've been isolated by my enemies, maybe, is a better way to think about it. I'm not surrounded by them. They're not because coming of, after me. But either I'm, the ideas or the I'm, situation. Yeah, I'm just, okay. I'm I'm separated out, which, again, I think it's partially also a coping mechanism just for me as well, is it's right. a, it's easier Those to take yourself, things. it's easier to take yourself out of a situation and not mm-hmm. involve yourself in a situation. Than, just pull yeah, back. And so just... But it's ice. But then yes. you isolate yourself yeah. off, right? It's true. And so, it's true. In those times, again, you just have to re-ask yourself. And I mean, this is what I try to do at those times. I'm like, well, why do mm. I think this? Like, what are sort of the merits of their point, my point, all these things? And then mm. usually, I just, I don't want to say I double down, but essentially, yeah, I double down on my position. <laughs> I'm just like, no, I'm doing the right thing. And so help me to stay true to my conviction. I mean, you you do. You pray and you try to stay Mm -hmm. true to your convictions, right? Mm -hmm. And that's That's true. That's a lot of what it is. So it's the isolation due to conviction, basically, I'd say. Okay. It's not so much surrounding, but in times like that, it's just you have the faith that you're standing true to your convictions. Mm. So that's Mm. sort of, it's not as filling as it might sound. (laughs) It sounds a lot better than it is. For modern times. Yeah. Those are often the enemies that we face, mm-hmm. you know, because we're not on battlefields, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. 
Um, and I guess I got the cart before the horse, but I'm going to go ahead and read that last uh, paragraph in Wednesday's lesson before the question, and then we can, we can move yeah. over to, uh, to Thursday's. It's a great paragraph. As Paul reminds us, our struggle is not against the enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So that makes it a little bit more clear when we talked about, you know, surrounded by enemies. Yeah, it wasn't necessarily people, but it's the other things in our lives that can cause us, you know, mm -hmm. uh, harm, in, as it were. Uh, our enemies include those we see and those we don't. Whether we like it or not, we're surrounded. Yet when we are with the shepherd, not one enemy, visible or invisible, can steal what he has provided for us. Mm -hmm. so, in fact, what he has provided for us, is, you know, based on verse 5, is enough that we can then share it with our, you know, <laughs> those enemies, you know, whatever they may be. Um, so, all right. Hmm. So finally, yes, right? We, we finally get to mm -hmm. the final verse uh, mm -hmm. for Thursday. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would add... What's that? Just, I would add something to the verse, which is, I would say, therefore, but, <laughs> but, and let's see if you can figure out why, what oh, it's absolutely. there for. Yes. Right. Um, surely goodness, so therefore, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. All right. So the, I'm going to jump right into this because, uh, it, it uh, I, I highlighted something, and and then I, I realized in the New Living Translation, it it actually gets it uh, it gets it right. It gets the translation really accurate. So, <clears throat> um, so the first the first paragraph. It, this is you know it's it's accurate. When we're in the valley or surrounded by enemies, whatever those enemies are, it's sometimes tempting to believe that we've been left alone. Uh, we we could choose to believe that, or we could choose to believe that God is there beside us. It does not always feel as though God has been doing much. I get that. Uh, that pat the the um, the poem, the footprints in the sand on, on the beach. Mm -hmm. We reason that if He had been helping, we wouldn't be in this situation to begin with. But David obviously does not see it like this. And then it says some translations say that goodness and unfailing love, God's covenant promises will follow me all the days of my life. However, the original verb is much stronger. So I want to read it from the New Living. It says this, Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. That goes right back to your original picture when we began talking about this, of the personal aspect mm -hmm. of the shepherd. It the, At no point in this passage does it make God... As as a, a standoff shepherd that um, you know just tries to keep the sheep together, and if one wanders off, well, whatever. I still got ninety nine. Man, the personal aspect, um, goodness and unfailing love in pursuit of us, not just following us, mm -hmm. but pursuing us. So that's active, and it's very. So what it makes me think of What's is that? I think of like sort of the spirit like nudging, right? The nudging of the spirit, okay. right? I think right. of that. But in this scenario, the nudging of the spirit is like, you ever get those like pop-up ads and they're so annoying or the thing, <laughs> all the spam in your mailbox. And it's like, we have these great things for you. Great yeah. things are waiting you. Great things. Like, and it's delete, never true, right? Delete, delete, but in this yeah. scenario, yeah. This is exactly what's going on, and it's actually it, true. It actually this is, is what the accurate. Holy Spirit is doing. He's like, I have these great things in store. God has these great things in store. You're like, delete. So delete. It's like I want to do my ad, own thing. Yeah, but, but it's real. But it's real. Uh, yes. It's like a pop-up ad that's real. So when we... But it pursues you like that. <laughs> <laughs> when we actually accept it, yes. then uh, imagine living in the joy knowing that that pop-up ad is telling you the truth, mm -hmm. not just you're making yeah. up some lie where you're gonna, well, maybe it's too good to be well, true. Well, and I mean, it's similar with like, if you think of like Jehovah's Witnesses and stuff, mm -hmm. have you heard about Jesus? It's like, oh my goodness, you're so annoying. Like, <laughs> but then when you have, you're like, yes, I have. He's yeah. awesome, right? And I mean, yeah. if you have like conversations sometimes with them, you're like, yeah, it's just like, let's just all bond of how awesome Jesus is, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it, yeah. it, it can be like that. It's like, That's a good no, point. I've already accepted the pop up ad. Like, <laughs> yep, and it, and it has changed me. Yeah. Yep. So um, you can be the personal testimony. <laughs> See, you have those too. You get the personal testimony of the person. I did this, and it changed my life. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's it's straight up. This is what this is. 
It's a pop-up ad. <laughs> Except it's real. <laughs> Except it's real. All right. You know, it asks, what picture do you get in your mind? Yep. That's clearly the picture you get in your mind. <laughs> okay. All okay. the spam, I just uh -huh. keep deleting them. Like, I thought I hit unsubscribe. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's funny, man. Um, so it, it just goes on in that, uh, in that vein. Uh, no matter how deep the valley or how persistent the enemies, the certainty of God's mm -hmm. goodness and unfailing love, the certainty of his guidance to the very end of our journey is unquestionable. Um, these are the thoughts in states. These are the thoughts that sustain Jesus through yeah. Calvary. So, if it could do that for him, and and when I think of that, again, short little rabbit trail, I think you and I have talked about this before. Um, you have you've experienced guilt in your life. Mm -hmm. Okay, same here. Terrible feeling. Mm -hmm. Terrible feeling. Not a feeling like man. I no. I, I hope I can feel guilty today. <laughs> never, <laughs> never once have said that in my life. Uh, and that's just for something that I have done or something that has happened that I was a part of. Uh, one thing, generally. Imagine compounding that guilt from my lifetime into into one sitting process. You know, that would be horrible. I'm not even sure that I could deal with that. And then Jesus compounding the guilt from every lifetime, mm -hmm. from all the people who have ever lived and who will ever live, and, you know, um, and and and... Like compound like that right there in that instance. It's no wonder. It's mm -hmm. no wonder he died. Uh, and they didn't have to stab him. They didn't have to, you know, bleed him or anything. He just, he died. It was too much. Um, but that's what sustained him. Yep. It can certainly sustain us too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now I've got that pop-up ad picture in my, in my head. So I like that. I like that a lot. Um, so this last question. Uh, what evidence is there from your own knowledge of God that can illustrate the certainty that his goodness and unfailing love pursue us. Uh, what evidence could you add from the Bible? How could you share this with those who may be questioning the certainty of God's care? And how is the cross the greatest example of this pursuit? So, um, I was talking with someone the other day about evangelism. And... <sighs> One of the greatest examples of evangelism is demonstrating God's character in our lives, mm -hmm. right? In fact, I think that is the greatest because we can we can say the words, we can say whatever we want, but if our lives aren't uh, accurately portraying what we're saying, oh man, we're just going to turn people off, right? Mm -hmm. um, or or they may not even understand the words that we're using when we talk about uh, sin and salvation and sacrifice mm -hmm. and blood, like. That doesn't make much sense to someone who doesn't have a background in Christianity. Now, if you show someone what it means to love unconditionally, they can understand that because they can see it. Mm -hmm. They can see what it means. You know, you don't have to. You're not using uh, arcane terminology or words that are um, special to the Seventh Day Adventist Church or the Baptist Church or whatever church. Um, you're just demonstrating action. You're mm -hmm. showing God's love. So, in this sense. Uh, I like the question, the third question, how could this, how could you share this with those who may be questioning the certainty of God's care by living it, by, by living it? Because if you just talk about it, that, what did, uh, I think it's a Ty Gibson quote. He said, uh, I, I may be misrepresenting and if I am, my, my apologies. Um, uh, Tony sang for your tunas, like the fish, the, the tuna fish, Tony sang for your tunas, like, uh. Okay, <laughs> that means nothing to me. Yeah. Uh, to someone who is not grounded in Christianity or doesn't have a history in this, when you say Jesus died for your sins, uh, okay, <laughs> that yeah. means nothing to me. So living it out clearly is the the highest yeah. and best form. And it's one of those things of, I mean, we've seen it on billboards, but I've I've mm. run into the example in multiple scenarios of the. If you say Jesus, that one of the greatest ways to turn people off is to open with, well, Jesus is the only path to salvation. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes. But it's amazing how many oh, Christians really? open with that. Well, <laughs> yeah. and it's amazing how many Christians yeah. open with that because yeah. I guess they have this idea of, and since this is the only way, aren't don't you want to get involved? And other people, you know the immediate reaction. If someone makes a big pronouncement to you in this day and age, you don't need to know. The first thing you do is, well, I'm going to challenge the pronouncement, right? right. I'm not going to act on the pronouncement as if it's true. I'm going to challenge, challenge it, it, right? Absolutely. I'm going to challenge it, right? I'm going to challenge it. 
mm -hmm. gonna, I'm gonna come up with every th reason why, yeah. no, actually, I don't need to do that thing. Yeah. I have another, I can do this other thing instead, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so by living it, you, you automatically defeat mm -hmm. that, that, uh, that wall building or that, yes. that defensive mechanism that we have. Uh, okay. But again, my point being, you also don't want to invoke the defensive mechanism either by opening, which is, is the only way. No, no, that, that's, that's what I mean. You yeah. you totally defeat it yes. by by not even by not even opening with mm -hmm. that, just by showing it in you know in, in in how you live. It should be. I guess what I'm trying to say there is. Mm. The end result should be obvious when you read scripture and when you do all this. If someone gets into like sees your actions and really starts looking at this Jesus person, it'll become clear to them why Jesus is the only. Yes, guy. yes, uh, but they'll have to see it first. Yes, yeah, not just hear it. Right, that's that's when they start to understand. Oh, not the door. Uh, that's when they start to understand. So. All right, I think that we've probably about reached the end of our lesson. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, Fridays. Those are for, thir food <laughs> for further thought. Food for thought. Food for thought. And we invite you um, to take a look at those questions. If you'd like to answer any of those and leave comments in our feedback in our, in our comment section, we really invite you to. Mm -hmm. uh, we do try to read those and respond wherever we can. Um, but I think that about closes things up. Uh, would you, uh, wait, you, you opened uh, prayer, yeah, didn't I you? Did. Okay. I'll go ahead and close this with okay. prayer then. Go for it. All right. Dear Jesus, we sure thank you, Lord, for joining us today. We ask for your presence to be here with us as we study together and discuss the lesson. And Lord, we don't just want your presence here, uh, opening the truths to us, to our hearts and minds. We'd ask, Lord, that you would provide your spirit to do this for all of those who study with us as they watch online, that you would open their hearts and minds to new truths and new um, joy and beauty found in this passage of Psalm 23. Lord, we thank you for giving this to us and for the privilege, privilege we have of studying together. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, guys, thank you for joining us, as always. And may God bless you until we see you again. <laughs>